Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to the calculation of future value, often abbreviated as FV. We're going to have multiple formats of the calculation, this being useful because you will often see multiple different calculations. You want to see what is going on when you see the multiple formats of the calculation. You want to be able to perform multiple formats of the calculation. And because multiple formats of the calculation can be useful depending on the time frame or what we are using, the future calculation for we will be calculating future value with one the formula then two we're going to be using a running balance type of calculation so we will calculate the future value at each period with the use of excel then we're going to calculate the future value with excel functions actually use an excel function to calculate then we will use tables to calculate the future value. You can also calculate the future value with a financial calculator. We won't demonstrate that here, but it will be similar to the Excel function calculation. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area into our worksheet on the right-hand side. We will be considering an invest investment and the accumulation of that investment because that's a common application for the calculation of the future value. We'll do this a couple different ways. We'll do that with a future value formula, this formula here, which we'll plug into kind of like a worksheet type of format. We will do it in like a running balance type of format for a three year time period. We will do it using Excel calculations. So you can use a function in Excel to go right to the answer. And we'll do it using tables, which is gonna be this table down below, which is gonna give us the future value tables, which is often used in like book problems and whatnot, oftentimes when you don't have a calculator or Excel. Okay, so we got the investment. We're going to say it's three years and the percent is going to be the 8%. First way we're going to calculate this is going to be with the, the uh, formula. So we'll do it for each of three years. So if we had 10,000, we put it in something, we put it into an investment, we're going to earn 8% on it. How much would we have then after one year? That's what we'll do here. How much would we have after two years? How much would we have after three years? We'll do that with each of our calculation formats, beginning with the formula. So we have our formula to the left. It's the formula is going to be the FV or future value equals PV or present value, in this case, the amount of the investment, times 1 plus R, the rate, which is going to be 8%, to the power of N, the number of periods. In our case, it's going to be periods of years. So we're going to say three years. So that's going to be the calculation. I'm going to do this in a table type of format. It's useful to kind of break these complex formulas out into basically a table format we're just going to do the algebra but we're going to do it in a vertical table format if you do that then you can you you can plug different numbers into this form into this item into the data input and let excel calculate it and see the components of sub calculations of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say all right there, there's the present value and i want to multiply that times this factor so these two i would like in the outer column and i'm going to do all other sub calculations in the inter column so I'm just going to break out the algebra here. So we're going to say present value, present value or PV, as you will often see it referred to as you're working through problems, is going to be the 10,000. That's what we're going to put in today. That's why it's the present value. And then I'm going to do the, the second part of this calculation, which is going to be this part, which is 1 plus the rate to N, which is the number of periods. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to do that in a vertical fashion. And I'm just going to say, all right, let's break that out. That'll be 1 plus the rate, which I'm going to say the rate is 8%. So I'll say rate, and I'll make this a percent, home tab, numbers group, percentifying it. And then I'll subtotal that. Let's, let's uh, say this is just going to be 1 plus the rate, which is going to be equal to the sum of these two items, which is going to give us 1 until we make a percent out of it home tab numbers group we're going to percentify that so we got 108 let's put an underline under the eight home tab font group and underline and then we're going to say that uh, we we just did this enter portion here and so we want to take that uh, to n here which is the number of periods so i'm going to i'm going to list it as number of periods now we have a three year investment, I'll indent this for now. We got a three year investment, but we're gonna do one year at a time. So we're gonna say, where would, we, where would we be after one period or one year? And that's gonna be N here. Note that we have to take it to the power of N. That's what we're doing. So that's gonna be our calculation. So I'll pick this up. This is gonna be our, our total of this whole section. So this whole second part here has now been completed, which is represented here. So I'm gonna indent this selecting these items home tab alignment indent 
I'll indent this again, home tab, alignment, and indent. So then I'm going to take this to the power of n. So I'm just going to say this equals the 108. Now the power is this little caret thing, shift six on the keyboard. It's a caret of the power of one. So it's one. So we're going to end up with the same number, but I'm going to percentify this home tab number percentify. And then we have the 108 again. So now we have our two halves, the present value times this half. We can go ahead and multiply that out. So I'm going to do that over here. This is going to be our end result. We're going to say the 10,000 times the 108 and we get uh, the 108 percent we get the 10,800 so we just basically took this formula you could plug it in this way of course and do it algebraically in this format just breaking down the algebra into a table format then you could change the numbers over here and see each component of this calculation in kind of like a table type of format this uh, I think that's going to be useful it's often it's a useful skill to build the table useful skill to be able to change these numbers and see how an excel table will differ Let's put some underlines here. I'm going to put an underline here and here. I'm selecting these two non-adjacent cells, home tab, font group, and underline. Now let's do the same thing over here. Uh, we, if we did it like a, a period by period calculation, we can actually do that. Let's do that. If we started with period number zero and we said the value at period zero was 10,000, and then we're going to say, all right, now let's go to period one where we're going to calculate interest on this. So now we have the interest, which is going to be equal to the 10,000 times 8% for one year, that's going to be 800. So where would we be at the end of that point in time? We would be equal to the 10,000 plus the 800. Another way you can format that table, you could say, okay, well, what if I just had period zero and I started with the same 10,000 investment and I want to jump right to where I will be after one year. After one year, you're going to say, okay, well, then you're going to say this equals the 10,000 times and you can say uh, one plus or 100 percent plus the eight percent which would be that 108 percent and that would jump you right to the to the 10,800 and then if you wanted to calculate the interest you could simply take the difference so you could say this will be equal to 10,800 minus the 10,000 and do your running balance in that format all right now let's do it in excel now there's a couple different ways you could do it in excel one is you could just start to type in the formula here or you can use the formula box, and this can be useful if, if uh, you're not as good at typing a particular formula because you can get more information from Excel on how to do it. So you might then go to the formulas tab up top, and we're going to insert a function. And then if you didn't have the function, there it is right there, but I can type in future value, and it'll give you the functions. And if I go down here, I can read it, and it says, well, FV returns the future value of an investment. That's the one we want. So the FV or future value formula, I'm going to say, okay, we get this nice little formula dialog box here, which will help us to break this out. So now we're going to just fill in this information. So we're just going to say, all right, the rate is going to be 8%. So the rate's going to be 8%. It's per year. So I don't have to do anything else to it. It's just simply the 8%. The number of periods then it's simply going to be one, right? We're going to do three years total, but we're starting at one year at a time. So just one period. Now the payment, this is a little bit confusing because we're not going to be thinking about a payment right now because that would be is if we were making payments throughout the time period, like an annuity, and we're not doing that. So this is actually zero. What we are doing is, is trying to take a present value from you know this point in time to one point in time in the future, not making pay, you know fixed payments like an annuity. So that's the thing that's a little bit confusing, but it's useful because you can use the same dialog box then for basically annuities where you do make payments, which we will do in the future, and to those items where you don't make payments, where you just have one uh, future amount from one lump sum you know, starting point. So the present value then, uh, the reason it's not bold is because you would only use it if you were doing this format. You wouldn't use it if it was an annuity. These three being bold means that they're going to be required no matter what calculation you're doing using this for this formula so i'm just going to pick up then the uh the 10,000 that i'm going to say enter and there it is there's our 10,800 so we got there with with this calculation this will become much more useful of course as we get to more years out in the future i i then would like to see it as a positive number so to do that i usually just double click on it and i make the whole thing i put a negative in front of the whole thing and that'll say basically take the whole thing and multiply it times a negative one is in essence what that does. So that'll that'll flip the sign. Other people will put the negative somewhere else, whatever. You know, it's, you, we're just trying to flip the sign. If you multiply the whole thing times negative one, that's one way you can do it. Then we can do the table. 
Now, this is often useful in book problems where they may try to restrict you from having like a financial calculator. It was also very useful before we had like Excel and whatnot. The tables were really useful to be able to jump to things. So you'll still see it when you do school problems and whatnot. But then the more you work in practice, the more you're probably going to be using the formulas like Excel formula or a financial calculator. And I think more and more probably the formulas themselves in Excel than the financial calculator if you're working, you know, from an office. So we have the amount, if you're in the field, then a financial calculator, you know, on your phone or something <laughs> would be useful. Although you can have Excel on your phone now, I guess. So whatever. So here we go. In any case, we're going to have the 10,000, 10,000, and then we have the table rate, the table about. I'm just going to call it from the table. And now there's going to be multiple different tables, and we'll take a look at more examples in the future. But the first thing you got to know is you got to pick the right table. So you got to make sure that you're picking, you know, a future value table for a period of one. We're not talking about an annuity. So there's typically four tables, present value, and then present value of annuity, future value, future value of an annuity. So this is future value, and you can kind of tell because they're all, you know, over one, because obviously the result needs to be something greater than uh, the amount we started with, considering it should be accumulating upwards, whereas present value tables will be less than one. Okay, so basically we need one period, and the rate is going to be 8%, so it's going to be uh, point. Uh, 1.08, 1.08 from the table. So, all right, 1.08. Now, sometimes that table will, will you'll see it get broken out. It was like five decimals out. So that's still rounded in many cases. So we might not get the exact number with the table because there is going to be rounding involved. Home tab, font group, uh, underline, but it should be within, you know, what we need for most, for most cases. We're talking about dollars here. So when you're talking about some fraction below a dollar is probably immaterial for the most part. So then we're going to take the 10,000 and times the 1.08. And that's the other way we can calculate it. So right now it's the same thing for all calculations. All right, let's do it again. Now we're going to say, all right, let's do the same thing. But now it's going to be for two years. So we got the 10,000 investment that we put in. What if we waited two years and it was 8% uh, return on investment per year? Where would we be at the end of two years? Let's do it with a formula. I'm going to do the, I'm just going to say equals, pick up the information up top. I'm going to then use my autofill to drag it down. So I'm going to put my cursor on autofill and drag that down. So there's our, there's our information. Then I would like to highlight this whole thing or select the whole thing, format paint it, go into the home tab, clipboard format painter, and I'm going to format paint this entire thing. So there we have that. Uh, this is, there's nothing there. That's why it's zero. So we're going to start with the 10,000 investment, 10,000 investment. The rate is going to be, and then we're going to say one. So the, the 10,000 investment is the present value times one uh, plus R. So there's one plus the rate, which is R. So this equals the rate or 8%. And then we're going to add those up. So one plus the 8%. So now we have this inner factor and PVs on the outside. Now we need to take that to the power of n, which is the number of periods, which in this case we're going to say is 2 for 2 years. And there now we have to take that to the power of n. So I'm going to move this uh, to the outside. This is the whole second half now that we're going to be the result of that on the outside. It's going to be equal to, uh, we're going to be picking up the 108 caret, which is shift 6, to the power of 2 for 2 years, 2 periods. That gives us the 117. I'm going to add some decimals. Home tab, font group, add in a couple decimals. So it's about 116, 67%. Now I've got this factor and this factor. We will multiply them together. So this equals the 10,000 times the uh, that number. <laughs> and that's going to give us the 11664. Let's add some decimals. Home tab, uh, numbers, add a couple pennies there. So it's going to be breaking out even on that one as well. That's nice. Now let's do our running balance and say, okay, well, if we left off last time, if that's what we had at the end of year one, we're going to just calculate more interest on it. And we're going to say, okay, now we've got 10,800 that we're going to be calculating the interest on here, you know, compounding it yearly. So we're going to say the 10,800 times the uh, 8%. Now we got a little bit more interest. We got the 164 for the second year. If we add this up, we're going to get the 10,800 plus the 864 is going to be the 11, uh, the, the 11664. We can do it this way down here. I could say, all right, year two, 
Now I'm j I'd like to get j I jump right to this 11664 so I can say, well, let's take this 10,800 times brackets 1 plus the 8%. And that, once again, will take us to the 11664. If I want to figure out the interest, I can say, well, that's where we are now minus the prior period. The interest is at 864. We could do this with the uh, future value formula. Let's do it the way uh, we would do it with just like using the formula now. Instead of doing the table up top where we found it in the table here, I know it's the future value formula and we can use Excel's little function to do this. So we'll just say future value. I'll double click the future value down here. And then it gives us this nice little helper bar, which is basically the same thing as that table that we saw last time. It's a little bit more difficult to use, but uh, it's, it's a lot faster. And once you do it a couple times, you get used to just using this little thing down here. And then you don't need that at all either. But the rate then, we're just going to pick up the rate. That's it. And then I have to put a comma. It tells me. And it tells me down there. And then you put a comma. And then it jumps to the next one, which is NPER, which stands for the number of periods. The number of periods we said were two. So we're going to say two periods for two years out. We're going to do three next time, comma. This is the tricky one. This is the payment. We're not making payments because this is not an annuity. We only have an initial investment. But we still need to put something there, so we're going to say zero. And that's why this formula can be used for both annuities and non-annuities for future value formulas. And so it's useful for that, although it's a little confusing. Then you got to get used to that. kind of. Then you got the present value, PV, which is our current payment, our current investment, the 10000 And that's it. You can close up the brackets here, but if you don't do it, Excel won't even give you an error. They'll say, I'm, I'm pretty sure you want me to close up the brackets, so it'll close it up for you. There we have it. So there's a 11664. Let's make it a positive by double-clicking on it. I typically just put a negative in, in front of the F. So that'll just basically multiply the whole thing times negative 1, and there you have it. Let's do it with a table. Let's do it with a table now. So we're going to say the amount, and this one isn't the amount, amount, but like an added uh so amount is going to be the 10,000 once again. That's where we're starting, 10,000. We're going to pick the amount up from the table now. So down to the table, we're going to say, all right, a new, this is our table. So not an annuity, but the future value of one. And so we've got 8% times and, and then two periods, which is going to be this one, 1.1664. So I'm going to say, all right, table amount says 1.1664. I got to add some decimals, home tab. Numbers, add a couple decimals. Uh, one point, hold on a sec, that didn't seem right. Eight, two years, 1.1664. So let's say 1.1664. So there we have it. All right, and this is from the table. And that's going to give us, once again, our future value. This one, this time for the second, for two years out. Two years out future value. Multiplying that out, this is going to be the 10,000 times, not divide, times the uh, that. And so we have 11,664. Let's put an underline here. So same thing. That looks good. All, all ways we're doing it the same way or coming to the same thing. Let's do it for three years out now. That'll be fun. So one more time, three years out, we're going to say, let's do this and say equals. Pick up the same information for year two. I'm going to autofill that down. Let's autofill that down. And we'll use the good old autofill. I'm going to select this whole table then and format paint it. Go into the home tab, clipboard format painter. Format paint the entire thing. Get rid of that zero. Don't need it. We're going to put our formula in here once again. Present value. I'm going to put that on this far right side. We're going to multiply that then times this component. 1 plus R to the power of N. To the power of N. So we're going to say 1. And then the rate is going to be equal to the 8%. And then I'll add those up. So this is going to be our subtotal of 1 plus R. So 1 plus R to the power of N, which is now I can use a formula to pick this up because now it's that three year that we had up top. And then we're going to say this equals then the 108 to the power, which is shift 6 or the little caret, uh, time to the power of 3, to the power of 3. And then we now we have the two the two factors and we can multiply them together. This is going to be equal to the 10,000 times that thing we just calculated. And there we have it. So now we're at 12,597. So 12,597. Let's do that with up here with our running table. Running table. 
and we're going to say, all right, well, last time we ended, we ended off with 11,664, and we're going to be calculating our interest upon that. So 11,664, we're going to get another 8% in the next year. That's going to bring us up another uh, 933. Now I'm going to highlight this whole table and add some decimals because it's not quite even. So home tab, numbers, add some pennies. Let's add, pennies have been added down there already. Let's add some pennies over here before I forget. I'll select these, home tab, numbers, add some pennies there too. All right, then we're going to add these up. So this will be equal to the prior one plus that one. And there we have it. So that looks, that is that what we had down here? It totally is. So we're doing that right. Now we could do it here too. We could say this is going to be equal to this one above times brackets 1 plus 8% or 108%. And that will take us back to that 12000 597 and then if I want to know what the interest is well I can say this is where we're at now minus where we were last time and that means we had the interest of the, of the 933 12 now these two tables are running balance tables so these are really nice to be able to just kind of do so let's let's think about how we can just make a running balance of them I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the last part of them here and here and I'm gonna say okay we got three periods Let's then, could I just copy this down? Like once I do this one time, couldn't I just copy this down? Well, let's do it one time and see what a problem is. If, if there will be a problem, I'm going to copy it down. It's like, ah, this doesn't, that shouldn't be zero. What happened? It brought the eight down. That's not what I wanted it to do. But this one did what I wanted it to do. It, the formula went down just like I would like it to do. It did what I wanted it to do. So that means I just need to change. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to double click this one that eight percent need to change it need to change it that's in b3 so that b3 i need to make it an absolute reference say like don't move that excel when i copy it down don't move it so i'm going to put f4 on it putting a dollar sign before the b and the three enter now let's try it again i'm going to select these three i'm going to copy it all the way down because that's how confident i am that we did it right this time i'm going to do it all the way down to, the, to period three and there we have it so now it's doing the right thing if i double click and that's so that that kind of running balance very useful formula to have if I was to add up the interest column, say for three years, this is what we've earned. These are our earnings. Home tab, font group, and underline. We could do the same thing here if I was to copy this down. Say what, what would happen if I copied this down? It, it calculated like uh, th this number times a blank cell, right? You, this should be higher than like that number. So we have to do the same thing. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say this 8%. We don't want that to move. So we're going to say that's in cell B3, B3, F4, dollar sign before the B and 3, and enter. Now we could select these items and auto-fill them down. And there we have it. That does, like, does what we think it should do. So then the total, if I sum up the interest in the outer column now, is going to be these items. We don't sum up the value column because that the value is what it is. That's where it is, that's where it is at, the end of, at the end of year 3. But the interest, that's how much we've earned through the time period. All right, let's do it with Excel. We'll do it with Excel using our little uh, Excel form formula. So equals FV, future value. You could just say Shift 9 or you could double click on that FV. Let's say Shift 9 this time. We want to pick up the rate because that's what it tells us to do. That's a yearly rate, which is what we're using right now. So there's the rate. Then you got to do a comma. It says then, why is it right? You can move this thing so it doesn't sit on the top of the thing. So then you can do a comma and then you have the number of periods. So the number of periods is now going to be three, which I'm going to pick up with a formula this time. And then comma, this is the tricky one, the payments. We're not making payments. This isn't an annuity. That's what that means. This, do you want an annuity? No. That means we're going to say no with a zero. Or you can just put another comma there, like two commas. I usually put a zero there. I don't know why, but you could just put two commas, and that like negates that portion. And then we're going to say the, the present value is this 10,000. 10,000 and enter. So once again, there's the 12,597. I'm going to double click on that, put a negative before the F to flip the sign, basically multiplying it times negative one. And there we have it once again. We have it again. Let's do it with the, <clears throat> the tables now. So the amount is going to be, I'm just going to pick up the same 10,000 from this table up above. And then we're going to pick up the table amount. So the table amount, making sure we have the right table. We only have one table down here, but you might, you know, they might give you four tables. Make sure you have the right one. This is the future value table. So we have the 8%. 8% for three periods is the 1.2597. So they say 1.2597. Let's underline, let's format this home tab, uh, numbers, add some decimals, put an underline on it, and then we can multiply this out. 
right there by saying 10,000 times that number and there we have it and then we can say that this is going to be the future value once again uh, right there so that's going to be the future value three years future value three years now notice this one came out a little bit different it came out a little bit different in terms of pennies so it's like pretty good but it's not exact and so if we go down if we if i if i take a look at this i'd say well you know what's the, what's the decimal that it should be if i if i pick up this um this 12,597 divided by the investment of the 10,000 according to our formula then if i add some decimals home tab numbers adding some decimals it should be you know see it's a it doesn't stop at four places right it should be 1.25971 and they've got 1.2597 and so they stopped it at four decimal places and therefore we have a bit of rounding but that's typically okay because it's like within the pennies areas and so that's probably within what we need but notice the tables are not exact as exact as the formulas